Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Apple Inc. Apple Inc. is an American multinational technology company headquartered in Cupertino, California that designs, develops, and sells consumer electronics, computer software, and online services. The company's hardware products include the iPhone smartphone, the iPad tablet, computer, the Mac personal computer, the iPod portable media player, the Apple Watch smartwatch, and the Apple TV digital media player. Apple's consumer software includes the macOS and iOS operating systems, the iTunes media player, the Safari web browser, and the Alive and eWork, creativity and productivity suites. Its online services include the iTunes Store, the iOS App Store and Mac App Store, Apple Music, and iCloud. Apple was founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne in April 1976 to develop and sell personal computers. It was incorporated as Apple Computer, Inc in January 1977, and sales of its computers saw significant momentum and revenue growth for the company. Within a few years, they had hired a staff of computer designers and had a production line. Apple went public in 1980 to instant financial success. Over the next few years, Apple shipped new computers featuring innovative graphical user interfaces and Apple's marketing commercials for its products received widespread critical acclaim. However, the high price tag of its products and limited software titles caused problems, as did power struggles between executives at the company. Jobs resigned from Apple, and created his own company. As the market for personal computers increased, Apple's computers saw diminishing sales due to lower-priced products from competitors, in particular those offered with the Microsoft Windows operating system. More executive job shuffles happened at Apple until then CEO Gil Emilio in 1997 decided to buy Jobs' company to bring him back. Jobs regained position as CEO and began a process to rebuild Apple's status, which included opening Apple's own retail stores in 2001, making numerous acquisitions of software companies to create a portfolio of software titles, and changed some of the hardware technology used in its computers. It again saw success, and returned to profitability. In January 2007, Jobs announced that Apple Computer, Inc would be renamed Apple Inc. to reflect its shift and focus toward consumer electronics, and announced the iPhone, which saw critical acclaim and significant financial success. In August 2011, Jobs resigned as CEO due to health complications, and Tim Cook became the new CEO. Two months later, Jobs died, marking the end of an era for the company. Apple is the world's largest information technology company by revenue, and the world's second largest mobile phone manufacturer after Samsung. In February 2015, Apple became the first U.S. company to be valued at over $700 billion. The company employs 116,000 full-time employees and maintains 496 retail stores in 21 countries. It operates the iTunes Store, which is the world's largest music retailer. More than 1 billion Apple products are actively in use worldwide. Apple's worldwide annual revenue totaled $215 billion for the 2016 fiscal year. The company enjoys a high level of brand loyalty, and has been repeatedly ranked as the world's most valuable brand. However, it receives significant criticism regarding the labor practices of its contractors and its environmental and business practices including the origins of source materials. 1976-84 Founding and Incorporation Apple was founded on April 1, 1976 by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne. 
to sell the Apple Eye personal computer kits. The Apple Eye kits were computers single-handedly designed and hand-built by Wozniak and first shown to the public at the Homebrew Computer Club. Apple Eye was sold as a motherboard, which was less than what is now considered a complete personal computer. The Apple Eye went on sale in July 1976 and was market priced at $666.66. Apple was incorporated on January 3, 1977, without Wayne, who sold the share of the company back to Jobs and Wozniak for $800. Multimillionaire Mike Markula provided essential business expertise and funding of $250,000 during the incorporation of Apple. During the first five years of operations revenues grew exponentially, doubling about every four months. Between September 1977 and September 1980 yearly sales grew from $775,000 to $118 million, an average annual growth rate of 533%. The Apple II, also invented by Wozniak, was introduced on April 16, 1977, at the first West Coast Computer Fair. It differed from its major rivals, the TRS-80 and Commodore PET because of its character cell-based color graphics and open architecture. While early Apple II models used ordinary cassette tapes as storage devices, they were superseded by the introduction of a 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drive and interface called the Disk II. The Apple II was chosen to be the desktop platform for the first killer app of the business world, VisiCalc, a spreadsheet program. VisiCalc created a business market for the Apple II and gave home users an additional reason to buy an Apple II compatibility with the office. Before VisiCalc, Apple had been a distant third-place competitor to Commodore and Tandy. By the end of 1970s, Apple had a staff of computer designers and a production line. The company introduced the Apple III in May 1980 in an attempt to compete with IBM and Microsoft in the business and corporate computing market. Jobs and several Apple employees, including Jeff Raskin, visited Xerox Park in December 1979 to see the Xerox Salto. Xerox granted Apple engineers three days of access to the park facilities in return for the option to buy 100,000 shares of Apple at the pre-IPO price of $10 a share. Jobs was immediately convinced that all future computers would use a graphical user interface, and development of a GUI began for the Apple Lisa. In 1982, however, he was pushed from the Lisa team due to infighting. Jobs took over Jeff Raskin's low-cost computer project, the Macintosh. A race broke out between the Lisa team and the Macintosh team, over which product would ship first. Lisa won the race in 1983, and became the first personal computer sold to the public with a GUI, but was a commercial failure due to its high price tag and limited software titles. On December 12, 1980, Apple went public at $22 per share, generating more capital than any IPO since Ford Motor Company in 1956 and immediately creating 300 millionaires. 1984-91 Success with Macintosh in 1984, Apple launched the Macintosh, the first personal computer to be sold without a programming language. Its debut was signified by 1984, a $1.5 million television commercial directed by Ridley Scott that aired during the third quarter of Super Bowl 18 on January 22, 1984. The commercial is now hailed as a watershed event for Apple's success and was called a masterpiece by CNN and one of the greatest commercials of all time by TV Guide. 
The Macintosh initially sold well, but follow-up sales were not strong due to its high price and limited range of software titles. The machine's fortunes changed. With the introduction of the LaserWriter, the first postscript laser printer to be sold at a reasonable price, and PageMaker, an early desktop publishing package. It has been suggested that the combination of these three products were responsible for the creation of the desktop publishing market. The Macintosh was particularly powerful in the desktop publishing market due to its advanced graphics capabilities, which had necessarily been built in to create the intuitive Macintosh GUI. In 1985, a power struggle developed between Jobs and CEO John Scully, who had been hired two years earlier. The Apple Board of Directors instructed Scully to contain Jobs and limit his ability to launch expensive forays into untested products. Rather than submit to Scully's direction, Jobs attempted to oust him from his leadership role at Apple. Scully found out that Jobs had been attempting to organize a coup and called a board meeting, at which Apple's board of directors sided with Scully and removed Jobs from his managerial duties. Jobs resigned from Apple and founded Nextink the same year. After Jobs' departure, the Macintosh product line underwent a steady change of focus to higher price points, the so-called high right policy, named for the position on the chart of price vs profits. Jobs had argued the company should produce products aimed at the consumer market and aimed for a $1,000 price for the Macintosh, which they were unable to meet. Newer models selling at higher price points offered higher profit margin, and appeared to have no effect on total sales as power users snapped up every increase in power. Although some worried about pricing themselves out of the market, the high right policy was in full force by the mid-1980s, notably due to Jean-Louis Gasset's mantra of 55 a die, referring to the 55% profit margins of the Macintosh II. This policy began to backfire in the last years of the decade as new desktop publishing programs appeared on PC. Clones that offered some or much of the same functionality of the Macintosh, but at far lower price points. The company lost its monopoly in this market and had already estranged many of its original consumer customer base who could no longer afford their high-priced products. The Christmas season of 1989 was the first in the company's history that saw declining sales and led to a 20% drop in Apple's stock price. Gasset objections were overruled, and he was forced from the company in 1990. Later that year, Apple introduced three lower-cost models, the Macintosh Classic, Macintosh LC and Macintosh IISI, all of which saw significant sales due to pent-up demand. In 1991, Apple introduced the PowerBook, replacing the luggable Macintosh Portable with a design that set the current shape for almost all modern laptops. The same year, Apple introduced System 7, a major upgrade to the operating system which added color to the interface and introduced new networking capabilities. It remained the architectural basis for the classic Mac OS. The success of the PowerBook and other products brought increasing revenue. For some time, Apple was doing incredibly well introducing fresh new products and generating increasing profits in the process. The magazine McCaddick named the period between 1989 and 1991 as the first golden age of the Macintosh. Apple believed the Apple II series was too expensive to produce and took away sales from the low-end Macintosh. In 1990, Apple released the Macintosh LC which featured a single expansion slot for the Apple eCard to help migrate Apple II users to the Macintosh platform. The Apple E was discontinued in 1993.
1991-97, Decline and Restructuring The success of Apple's lower-cost consumer models, especially the LC, also led to cannibalization of their higher-priced machines. To address this, management introduced several new brands, selling largely identical machines at different price points aimed at different markets. These were the high-end Quadra, the mid-range Centris line, and the ill-fated Performer series. This led to significant market confusion, as customers did not understand the difference between models. Apple also experimented with a number of other unsuccessful consumer-targeted products. During the 1990s, including digital cameras, portable CD audio players, speakers, video consoles, the World Online Service, and TV appliances, enormous resources were also invested in the problem-plagued Newton division based on John Scully's unrealistic market forecasts. Ultimately, none of these products helped in Apple's market share and stock prices continued to slide. Throughout this period, Microsoft continued to gain market share with Windows by focusing on delivering software to cheap commodity personal computers, while Apple was delivering a richly engineered but expensive experience. Apple relied on high profit margins and never developed a clear response. Instead, they sued Microsoft for using a GUI similar to the Apple Lisa in Apple Computer, Inc. v. Microsoft Corp. The lawsuit dragged on for years before it was finally dismissed. At this time, a series of major product flops and missed deadlines sullied Apple's reputation, and Scully was replaced as CEO by Michael Spindler. By the early 1990s, Apple was developing alternative platforms to the Macintosh, such as AUX. The Macintosh platform itself was becoming outdated because it was not built for multitasking and because several important software routines were programmed directly into the hardware. In addition, Apple was facing competition from OS to a Unix vendors such as Sun Microsystems. The Mac Macintosh would need to be replaced by a new platform or reworked to run on more powerful hardware. In 1994, Apple allied with IBM and Motorola in the AIM Alliance with the goal of creating a new computing platform which would use IBM and Motorola hardware coupled with Apple software. The AIM Alliance hoped that Prep's performance and Apple software would leave the PC far behind and thus counter Microsoft. The same year, Apple introduced the Power Macintosh, the first of many Apple computers, to use Motorola's Power PC processor. In 1996, Spindler was replaced by Gil Emilio as CEO. Emilio made numerous changes at Apple, including extensive layoffs and cut costs. After numerous failed attempts to improve Mac OS, first with the Taligent project and later with Copland and Gershwin, Emilio chose to purchase Next and its next step operating system and bring Steve Jobs back to Apple. 1997-2007 Return to Profitability the next deal was finalized on February 9, 1997, bringing Jobs back to Apple as an advisor. On July 9, 1997, Emilio was ousted by the board of directors after overseeing a three-year record low stock price and crippling financial losses. Jobs acted as the interim CEO and began restructuring the company's product line. It was during this period that he identified the design talent of Jonathan Ive, and the pair worked collaboratively to rebuild Apple's status. At the 1997 Macworld Expo, Jobs announced that Apple would join Microsoft to release new versions of Microsoft Office for the Macintosh. 
and that Microsoft had made a $150 million investment in non-voting Apple stock. On November 10, 1997, Apple introduced the Apple Online Store, which was tied to a new build to order manufacturing strategy. On August 15, 1998, Apple introduced a new all-in-one computer reminiscent of the Macintosh 128K, the iMac. The iMac design team was led by Ive, who would later design the iPod and the iPhone. The iMac featured modern technology and a unique design, and sold almost 800,000 units in its first five months. During this period, Apple completed numerous acquisitions to create a portfolio of digital production software for both professionals and consumers. In 1998, Apple purchased Macromedia's Key Grip software project, signaling an expansion into the digital video editing market. The sale was an outcome of Macromedia's decision to solely focus upon web development software. The product, still unfinished at the time of the sale, was renamed Final Cut Pro. When it was launched on the retail market in April 1999, the development of Key Grip also led to Apple's release of the consumer video editing product iMovie in October 1999. Next, Apple successfully acquired the German company Astarte which had developed DVD authoring technology, as well as Astarte's corresponding products and engineering team in April 2000. Astarte's digital tool DV Director was subsequently transformed into the professional-oriented DVD Studio Pro software product. Apple then employed the same technology to create iDVD for the consumer market. In 2002, Apple purchased Nothing Real for their advanced digital compositing application Shake, as well as eMagic for the music productivity application Logic. The purchase of eMagic made Apple the first computer manufacturer to own a music software company. The acquisition was followed by the development of Apple's consumer-level garage band application. The release of iPhoto in the same year completed the Alive Suite. Mac OS X, based on Next's OP and STEP and BSD Unix, was released on March 24, 2001. After several years of development, aimed at consumers and professionals alike, Mac OS X aimed to combine the stability, reliability and security of Unix with the ease of use afforded by an overhauled user interface. To aid users in migrating from Mac OS 9, the new operating system allowed the use of OS 9 applications within Mac OS X via the classic environment. On May 19, 2001, Apple opened its first official eponymous retail stores in Virginia and California. On October 23rd of the same year, Apple debuted the iPod Portable Digital Audio Player, the product, which was first sold on November 10, 2001, was phenomenally successful with over 100 million units sold within six years. In 2003 Apple's iTunes Store was introduced. The service offered online music downloads for $0.99 a song and integration with the iPod. The iTunes Store quickly became the market leader in online music services, with over 5 billion downloads by June 19, 2008. Two years later, the iTunes Store was the world's largest music retailer. At the Worldwide Developers Conference keynote address on June 6, 2005, Jobs announced that Apple would begin producing Intel-based Mac computers in 2006. On January 10, 2006, the new MacBook Pro and iMac became the first Apple computers to use Intel's Core Duo CPU. By August 7, 2006, Apple made the transition to Intel chips for the entire Mac product line, over one year sooner than announced. 
the Power Mac, iBook, and PowerBook brands were retired during the transition, the Mac Pro, MacBook, and MacBook Pro became the respective successors. On April 29, 2009, the Wall Street Journal reported that Apple was building its own team of engineers to design microchips. Apple also introduced Boot Camp in 2006 to help users install Windows XP or Windows Vista on their Intel Macs alongside Mac OS X. Apple's success during this period was evident in its stock price. Between early 2003 and 2006, the price of Apple's stock increased more than tenfold, from around $6 per share to over $80. In January 2006, Apple's market cap surpassed that of Dell. Nine years prior, Dell CEO Michael Dell had said that if he ran Apple he would shut it down and give the money back to the shareholders. Although Apple's market share in computers had grown, it remained far behind competitors using Microsoft Windows, accounting for about 8% of desktops and laptops in the US. Since 2001, Apple's design team has progressively abandoned the use of translucent colored plastics first used in the iMac G3. This design change began with the titanium-made PowerBook and was followed by the iBook's white polycarbonate structure and the flat panel iMac. 2007-11 Success with Mobile Devices During his keynote speech at the Macworld Expo on January 9, 2007, Jobs announced that Apple Computer, Inc. would thereafter be known as Apple Inc. because the company had shifted its emphasis from computers to consumer electronics. This event also saw the announcement of the iPhone and the Apple TV. The company sold 270,000 iPhone units during the first 30 hours of sales, and the device was called a game-changer for the industry. Apple would achieve widespread success with its iPhone, iPod Touch and iPad products, which introduced innovations in mobile phones, portable music players, and personal computers respectively. Furthermore, by early 2007, 800,000 Final Cut Pro users were registered. In an article posted on Apple's website on February 6, 2007, Jobs wrote that Apple would be willing to sell music on the iTunes Store without digital rights management, thereby allowing tracks to be played on third-party players, if record labels would agree to drop the technology. On April 2, 2007, Apple and Emmy jointly announced the removal of DRM technology from Emmy's catalog in the iTunes Store, effective in May 2007. Other record labels eventually followed suit and Apple published a press release in January 2009 to announce the corresponding changes to the iTunes Store. In July 2008, Apple launched the App Store to sell third-party applications for the iPhone and iPod Touch. Within a month, the store sold 60 million applications and registered an average daily revenue of $1 million, with Jobs speculating in August 2008 that the App Store could become a billion-dollar business. For Apple, by October 2008, Apple was the third largest mobile handset supplier in the world due to the popularity of the iPhone. On December 16, 2008, Apple announced that 2009 would be the last year the corporation would attend the Macworld Expo. After more than 20 years of attendance, and that senior vice president of worldwide product marketing Philip Schiller would deliver the 2009 keynote address in lieu of the expected jobs. The official press release explained that Apple was scaling back on trade shows in general, including Macworld Tokyo and the Apple Expo in Paris, France, primarily 
because the enormous successes of the Apple retail stores and website had rendered trade shows a minor promotional channel. On January 14, 2009, Jobs announced in an internal memo that he would be taking a six-month medical leave of absence from Apple until the end of June 2009 and would spend the time focusing on his health. In the email, Jobs stated that, the curiosity over my personal health continues to be a distraction not only for me and my family, but everyone else at Apple as well, and explained that the break would allow the company to focus on delivering extraordinary products. Despite Jobs' absence, Apple recorded its best non-holiday quarter during the recession, with revenue of $8.16 billion and profit of $1.21 billion. After years of speculation and multiple rumored leaks, Apple unveiled a large screen tablet-like media device known as the iPad on January 27, 2010. The iPad ran the same touch-based operating system as the iPhone, and many iPhone apps were compatible with the iPad. This gave the iPad a large app catalog on launch, despite very little development time before the release. Later that year on April 3, 2010, the iPad was launched in the US. It sold more than 300,000 units on its first day and 500,000 by the end of the first week. In May of the same year, Apple's market cap exceeded that of competitor Microsoft for the first time since 1989. In June 2010, Apple released the iPhone 4, which introduced video calling, multitasking, and a new uninsulated stainless steel design that acted as the phone's antenna. Later that year, Apple again refreshed its iPod line of MP3 players by introducing a multi-touch iPod Nano an iPod Touch with FaceTime, and an iPod Shuffle that brought back the buttons of earlier generations. Additionally, on October 20, Apple updated the MacBook Air laptop, a life suite of applications, and unveiled Mac OS X Lion, the last version with the name Mac OS X in October 2010. Apple shares hit an all-time high, eclipsing $300. On January 6, 2011, the company opened its Mac App Store, a digital software distribution platform similar to the iOS App Store, alongside peer entities such as Atari and Cisco Systems. Apple was featured in the documentary Something Ventured, which premiered in 2011 and explored the three-decade era that led to the establishment and dominance of Silicon Valley. On January 17, 2011, Jobs announced in an internal Apple memo that he would take another medical leave of absence for an indefinite period to allow him to focus on his health. Chief Operating Officer Tim Cook assumed Jobs' day-to-day -day operations at Apple, although Jobs would still remain involved in major strategic decisions. Apple became the most valuable consumer-facing brand in the world. In June 2011, Jobs surprisingly took the stage and unveiled iCloud, an online storage and syncing service for music, photos, files and software which replaced MobileMe, Apple's previous attempt at content syncing. This would be the last product launch Jobs would attend before his death. It has been argued that Apple has achieved such efficiency in its supply chain that the company operates as a monopsony and can dictate terms to its suppliers. In July 2011, due to the American debt ceiling crisis, Apple's financial reserves were briefly larger than those of the U.S. government. On August 24, 2011, Jobs resigned his position as CEO of Apple. He was replaced by Cook, and Jobs became Apple's chairman. Prior to this, Apple did not have a chairman, and instead had two co-lead directors, Andrea Young and Arthur D. Levinson, who continued with those titles until Levinson became chairman of the board in November.
Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.